Hello everyone, this is Nandini Goyal and today we have with us Professor Dr. Prasananchu sir. It's an honor to have you today with us sir. Now let me start with a brief introduction into the theme of this interview. Recently, I conducted a research on some of the influential speeches in history and tried to analyze what are the ingredients that actually make a speech influential? In the course of the study, I analyzed various Indian speeches, such as those by Subhash Chandra Bose, Gandhiji, some international speeches like those by Winston Churchill, John F. Kennedy, Adolf Hitler, etc. And to add a fun element to the research, I even added some of the famous speeches from movies, such as from the movie Braveheart, the freedom speech, Leonardo DiCaprio's speech from the movie Wolf of Wall Street. For literature review, I reviewed various books such as Dale Carnegie's Art of Public Speaking, then Aristotle's Art of Rhetoric, and many more. I even added a special segment on a comparison between influential speaking between men and women and why there are less number of influential speakers who are women than there are men. Now, coming to the first question, sir, since you are an expert in this field, my first question to you is that what is, in your opinion, the key features that make a speech influential and how important do you think is public speaking, especially uh, in the legal domain? If you are able to connect with people, that makes the speech influential. And for connecting, the most important thing is you approach. That is, you have to understand your audience. You have to talk something which is of their benefit, their interest, their understanding. And there are many other classical things as you must have come across, like how to organize your speech. It should be well structured. The timing, use of body language, use of paralinguistics, all those things are also there. If you, you mentioned art of rhetoric, and I think rhetoric was utilized not only in politics originally the greek concept it was also being used in oratory and uh, in courtrooms if you look at uh, cicero for example his defense speeches they were examples of oratory and they were infused with or influenced by the art and science of rhetoric. So that holds true even for us. We require <clears throat> the art of oratory. <clears throat> and art of oratory is just a small part of communication skills. <clears throat> because speaking and that also speaking in public is not everything. So you have to be a good communicator and also you have to keep honing your public speaking skills for obvious reasons. In the courtroom communication, these things can be adapted and utilized in total or in parts. Sir, you had mentioned about body language, paralinguistics and other elements. So, uh, how much do you think these non-verbal elements actually influence the speech in comparison to the verbal elements? What's your take on that, sir? There is no meter to gauge the exact amount. And second is there are studies like Marabian's discounted by himself study that 55% is Nonverbal communication because only 7% is linguistic. So, and as I always say, this is indicator. This shows this is the potential. 
or this may be true in some circumstances. In some thing is, we have to understand that all the three elements are very important: verbal, non-verbal, and paralinguistic. And how to utilize them? What mix to utilize? How to optimize the message? And a message will be incomplete without the three elements. This we have to understand. Sir, you have been also involved in the field of neuro linguistics for quite some time now. And recently, I read a study which which stated that neuro linguistic programming uh, can be used to influence. a judge's decision by lawyers this is the latest study um, how this could be used how this approach could be used so sir how justified is that and what what do you think about it sir there is a big difference between nlp neuro linguistics nlp is neuro linguistic programming that is um, a training program as far as i understand in specialized communication skills uh, one of my students in fact is doing his phd under me to bridge the gap between nlp and neuro linguistics he is working in the field of psychology of rehabilitation especially in language disorders language breakdown so first of all i think these are two things very different things thank you sir now moving on to the next part of the research i conducted a segment on why the number of women influential speakers is comparatively less as compared to men uh now after analyzing the data set i found the ratio of the number of women influential speaker to the number of male influential speakers to be highly contrasting um uh, i remember reading a quote by ms indira jaising who is a senior advocate in the supreme court and uh, who is also a very inspiring lady uh, she mentions and she shares her own personal experience she writes that when a woman is in the court and when she is arguing she is referred to as being shrill while her male counterparts male colleagues are valorized for the same totally aggressive behavior um so there is definitely um a difference in perception the reasons that i gathered from my study were first of all uh the difference in societal perception of men and women secondly the power imbalance i would like to know what is your take on this issue and why do you think uh, such a thing happens I don't agree with this theory or this hypothesis that women are less influential speakers number 2 there is something we have to rephrase in this question like in which field number 2 it is presuming that they are less influential speakers so that part i have uh, disown i am disagreeing with that women can be equally influential speakers if you go to ted talks for example you would find many many women speakers there and i find them to be very very good speakers even you have talked about uh, the movies if you look at the speech cleopatra speech uh, there are several so you would see that it's a wonderful speech and the matter i think we have to address is women being not given equal opportunities in many spheres i think that is the problem if the opportunity is equal then they will be as good or as bad a speaker as anyone else so what you're saying is absolutely true uh but i've observed that when 
men and women are at the same pedestal, they're at the same position. People are more willing, they're more interested in listening to what the man says than what the woman says. And this is something that I think is very prevalent and is also very common. But definitely what you're saying makes sense. But there's also another side to it that we cannot ignore. I will give you an example from my life. In my college, when I joined BSc, I joined the public speaking club or whatever the name was. And one of my classmates who was a girl, she also joined with me. And in the competition or in the, I don't know what it was, what the event was, she was first and I was second. So <laughs> do you think that, <laughs> what does it show? And I, uh, yes. Your hypothesis needs further research, but I believe I am an average man. So, and I think she was also an average woman, not different. But these are my hypotheses and your hypotheses are slightly different. So let us see. It requires further research. Yes, sir. So this was a small observation that I made uh, while analyzing the data in the data set. And definitely there are women who are exceptions, but they're very few. And but thank you. But thank you. that Speeches. Listen to the speeches by Sushma Swaraj. Listen to our female politicians. I don't think that they are, and even in TV debates, I sometimes envy them. them. I think if I were sitting in front of them, I wouldn't be able to even put across my point uh, because <laughs> they are so good in speaking and aggressive speaking. They are able to defeat a lot of male speakers in that uh, not so good communication as well as in good communication. I am so, calling it a bad communication because the aim of that communication is not to share ideas. It is just to show each other down. And good communication is the one in which we want to learn something from the others and where we want to put across our perspective also. Uh, what you're saying is absolutely true, sir. And I've heard Ms. Sushma Suraj's speeches and um, she was an inspiring lady. She was an amazing speaker. Definitely there are women uh, who make marks in their fields who are trailblazers. But if you look at the number, then the proportion of influential women speakers to that of men, it's highly skewed. So we can't say that, you know, at least in the field of influential speaking, they are at par with men. Although definitely when they get into their professions, their respective fields, uh, there are women who make their marks and inspire people. But uh, um, this was a small observation. But thank you for your insights, sir. May I add something at this point? Also listen to Benazir Bhutto and Sheikh Hasina and uh, um, Indira Gandhi. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They are part of my research, sir. Not only from Southeast East Asia, but also from all across the world, you will have very good speakers. And the second part that you are talking about numbers, that is very simple, that women do not have still an equal participation, equal opportunities in public life and employment and all fields which are stereotypically not reserved for them. So that skewed ratio is due to this skewed representation. That perfectly makes sense, sir. Now, moving on to the next segment. Um, what do you think are some common mistakes that law students make uh, when it comes to communication, public speaking, and they, these need to be addressed and they need to make amends in these areas. What are some of those areas that you feel? Court competitions I have seen, 
that it is a very unnatural type of communication culture that we have like moving aggressively all the basic um, uh, concepts of communication are broken there that is what i see and being for being assertive usually they are aggressive and that is rewarded also so the judges of these competitions and the whole community and the whole culture has to be reviewed because you can't really do all those things in a courtroom then what's the point the things you are doing in a moot court competition to win so that is the problem it's a very good opportunity very good place to learn communication but also <clears throat> i think some changes have to be made and perhaps that's the only place where i see <clears throat> students of law communicating in a very very specific way other than any other student because in the classrooms <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> and in presentations students of any stream and any field have to make presentations they do have to participate in classrooms but moot court is very typical of law students <laughs> Thank you, sir. Any further final concluding remarks or advice that you would like to give us or to our viewers, sir? I have not planned to give these final advices. Nothing is final. It's a continuing process. Communication is life. Like life flows, communication flows. Life is spontaneous. Communication is spontaneous. communication is for building bridges that is what it should be used for thank you so much. thank you so much sir it was an absolute honor and pleasure to have you today thank you so much thank you so much for your time sir welcome